Live. Okay. okay, so we are live. We are being recorded. <coughs> All right. Um, this is general and housing. Um, we are continuing our uh, kind of our organizational conversation here, just information for the committee in lieu of working on a bill. We haven't we haven't received any bills yet, but um, in terms of uh, committee orientation, we've had a convers we had a conversation last week, and we're going to pick up today with our committee assistant Ron Wild, who is going to take us through um, what this room has what the committee assistant can offer us and then we're going to follow that up with a meeting with um, our legislative council our two primary legislative counselors and um, the person who's going to sign to us from JSO as our fiscal advisor uh, Ron thank you uh, as I do you want to sit in the witness chair or what no, I don't as I attempt to um, navigate the mask situation when I'm speaking like this, I have to take it off. Otherwise, I end up with a terrible sore throat. Um, a couple of housekeeping things, and then mostly we're going to talk about the committee information. Um, I am your, I am the committee's committee assistant, which is a slight distinction between being your committee assistant. And the distinction is I'm not allowed to do constituent service. That's that's really the summary of what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. I'm allowed to assist you in your work as a committee member if you have supply office supply needs. If what I've anticipated isn't what you're looking for, just let me know and I'll do my best to find it. This is your work environment. This, for all intents and purposes, is your office. So my goal is to try to make it a productive environment for you, hence the cleanliness fetish. Um, the, uh, so paper, letterhead, um, paper clips, tape, staplers, envelopes, legislative <coughs> envelopes, blank envelopes, whatever it may be. It's probably already here, but if it's not, I'll get it for you. Um, the chair already spoke about absences. I've already gotten a few, that's great. In addition, when we're meeting, I'm usually working on the next day or the next week. In addition, I have a responsibility for about half of the House committee assistance and the <coughs> support role. All that's to say is that I'm frequently in and out of the room. Um, that's just my job. So um, I just say it out loud so that you know that's the case. Um, We have a trash. We have trash cans sprinkled around the room. We have paper recycling bins around the room. Uh, it's good to put cans and plastic bottles and such in the recycling bin. Just know that then I have to go outside and take them out of the bin and put them into the appropriate can, plastic, paper. So to the extent that it's convenient. If you would take the plastic and the cans, which is right outside the door, there's a big bin, I'll handle the paper. If you can't, then I'll do it. I've got gloves and everything. So just saying that's that's how it works. Custodial picks up the trash, I take the recycling. Is there still a compost? Yes. So trash, uh, recycle, recycle, trash, and then there's a little compost bin. I have no idea who's staffing it at least some legislators brought it there but yeah it is still there um generally speaking i will stream floor activities floor is 10 minutes i may not get to it but if there's a long session going on and you need to stretch and take a break from those ever so comfortable house chairs the likelihood is that you can just walk right down the ramp right here and it'll be on I can't guarantee that, but, but if you do come in, then I will certainly put it on. So that's just the convenience of being so close to the center. We have our chair, but we also have our chairs. And these chairs can be adjusted. We haven't really talked about it yet. Uh, for the self-helpers, I do have instructions, um, but they're really small print. I can also help you if they go up, if they go down, if they tilt. They can even get a little rocky going. Uh, they also, the seat itself can move front and back depending on 
your torso and where you're at. And of course the arms can go up and down and the arms also slide front and back. So uh, unlike, That's up and down, unlike the chairs in the chamber, these at least make like a pretense of being comfortable. Stiff in the back. So uh, there's that. So um, I can do it one at a time. We can have a little clinic on it, but you come in one morning and you'd like me to help you adjust your chairs. That's great. I think there's one or two chairs that don't have arms. I, I believe that's more of a, we inherited these chairs. So if your chair doesn't have an arm, it was probably either the person before you didn't want it or they were just trying to make room. But if you want a chair with arms, we can make that happen. If you want a chair without arms, even easier to make happen. So I could just take them off. Um, floor, chair, trash, what I can do, what I can't do, absences, supply needs. That was it, that's the, that's the, the crash course. Um, I need to say anything about myself. My, this is my 10th year of the legislature. It's my 10th year in this committee. It's my 10th year in the chair. Um, I've known him ever since the day he was a clerk. And that's my, uh, <laughs> my I live in town. I live in Montpelier. Um, 10 minute walk away. We have a big old house that two legislators use during the, during the session. Um, my wife's retired. I'm semi-retired. This is the semi-portion of my year. And, uh, and my career is in the nonprofit sector. Uh, roughly 10 years in youth services, roughly 10 years uh, in the arts, and roughly 10 years in transportation and a smattering of other things as well. I'm a JP, so in from Montpelier. And yeah, that's cool. Kind of it. More, more, more detail if you really want it, but that's, that's the long and the short of it. Uh, what I'd really like to do though is talk about the committee information page. So if you're comfortable and able to open up your iPads, that would be great. Um, I also have the uh, little fact sheet that I distributed and allow me to look about my page. Okay, so if I could sit here and stand there and point at the same time, I would, but I can't. So, um, the committee Did information you there point for you. Would that be helpful? I'm gonna leave there. Sure, that'd be great. If you're willing to do that, the committee information page will tell you so much information that you're going to want to know. Um, for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to go back a year because there's stuff there and there isn't stuff yet this year. But if you ever want to go back a year and you want to see where's that witness, where's that bill, because next year you will want to go back to last year. So uh, you'll see right here that, it, and you just, there's a little pull down and I'm just gonna go back. I'm just gonna go back to last year. Change colors. All right. So the first thing you want to do, you will want to do when you come to committee is you will want, huh, are you looking? Oh, okay. I'm going to go back to this year. The agenda. The agenda. The agenda is not there. <laughs> Let me go back to this year. Sorry. The first thing you want to do is return to the current session. <laughs> yep. And then go. I have uh, this committee of. When I open up the web, it comes directly to this committee. Okay. So there's the agenda. The agenda changes continually. I've probably updated the agenda four or five times today. So it is posted outside the door and plus there's a um, QR code. And if you want to take your phone and go click, it'll take you to the page. That's the plan. Um, but bear in mind, things change a lot. If it's a meaningful change to the extent we're not meeting and we said we were and the change got made on the floor, you'll get a text from me. I've entered all your phone numbers into a, a group. Um, 
if it's a change of we thought we were having witnesses at two and they're coming at 215 or the order of the witnesses have changed or any number of things where I make the adjustment, I'm not going to send out an announcement. I may not even make a change outside unless because it's still the same hearing, it's still the same time of day. But for you to have the latest, greatest, that's where you're going to find it at the committee page at the agenda button. Next week's agenda will show up. Um, late afternoon on Fridays. So there will be a brief period of time where we'll have two dates of agendas there. Now, going back to the uh, previous year. So you come, you wake up in the morning or you, you come here in the morning and you want to see what's what. The, um, you come to the committee information page and these are, documents for the day. There are no documents for today because we have the witnesses who have given me any. So I received documents and uh, I post them, but they're only visible, even to me, they're only visible the day of the hearing and then going forward. You can always look backwards, you can't look forward. Uh, the reason for that is uh, some of the documents are confidential and also the tomorrow and the day after remain a work in progress. So, um, so in the day, you look it up, you have the agenda, and you'll see the documents that have been submitted for the day's hearings. Agenda, documents for the day. If you want to track a bill, so you want to track a bill in committee, you just go to bill. And this is a list of every bill that was in committee over the last two years. And we'll tell you if I click on one that hopefully has some thing. But this is a bill gets assigned to committee it only receives a folder once we do something with it. So when the chair says, Ron, schedule an introduction, have the sponsor come in, then it'll start showing up. Have the attorney do a walkthrough, then it'll show up. If it's just on the wall and we haven't done anything with it yet, it won't be on that list. Does that make sense? Um, so let's look for one that uh, maybe has something in it. So this will tell you witness documents. It gives you a breakdown of what's happened with that bill. Some of these are going to be more uh, voluminous than others. Uh, just looking for a So amendments, the attorney is going to come in with as introduced, and then there's going to be version 1.1, 2.1, 5.1, 7.1. You'll find all of those there. Uh, fiscal reports from Joint Fiscal Office will also be in that first one under legal documents. Public comment are messages that have come to the committee from folks who are not witnesses. It's also interesting, a witness comes in, just so you understand how to find things. A witness comes in and you say, or the chair says, we would like some information and they say, I'll get back to you tomorrow or I'll send it to Ron. If it comes in day or two or three within reason, it still becomes a, a witness document and I will post it to the day that they were here. It usually comes in later that day or the next day. Now that same person's been following the bill and three weeks later, they said, I heard testimony and I just wanted to share my thoughts with the committee. That's now public comment. If someone just out there in the public world is following along and they have comments, that's also public comment. If we have, confusing, if we have a public hearing, every hearing is open to the public, but a public hearing is 
when we have a big gathering and everyone can sign up and get their two minutes or three minutes, depending on the, the size of the audience, uh, they frequently submit documents. And those two are public comments, but they'll frequently be bunched together. So I'll have it by date and then I'll just list them all. But that's where they'll be filed under public comment. We stop me if anything is not clear. So we have, yes. Please. Do you do you file um, emails that the whole committee is copied on into the public comment? Uh, it folder? depends uh, on my instructions from my chair. I will sometimes get something and the chair will instruct me to share it with you. I will sometimes get something and the chair will say, don't worry about it. Uh, it's just kind of a case by case. Um, I keep a folder. People will email me and they'll say, I want to testify. I want to know. And they're talking about a bill we may not take up till next year. So I have a folder, you know, an email folder for every bill that I receive an email about. So when we do take it up, I have a list of everyone who's contacted me, wanting to testify, wanting to be heard, wanting to share information, uh, maybe with a public comment. It won't. There's nothing to tag it to and take until we take the bill up. So I may get a public comment on something we simply haven't dealt with yet. And I, I will hold it until we do deal with it. And I tell the person that. You know, they don't just email me and it goes into a void. I respond and explain how it will be handled. Um, did that answer your question? Yep, thank you. So under other documents are subjects. So we have things that relate to bills, but then there's that whole general category. Uh, and so we know budget adjustment is coming at us pretty quickly. And so there'll be a budget adjustment folder. So if you wanted to see all the budget adjustment documents in one spot, you'd go to other documents and there's not a lot for budget adjustment. We'll get something to comment on, the committee will meet and discuss it and then someone will draft a, uh, a response and then I post that response. But that's just an example of how to track uh, things that are not bills. So you want, you know you want a document. And the easiest thing, of course, is always to ask me, but you're at home or you're on the floor because I'm tired, um, or I'm simply not in the room and you want a document that Jen Holler submitted regarding the Vermont uh, Housing Conservation Board last year. So you click on the witnesses and you're not sure the bill, the bill it was related to. And so you click on her, but you know it was from her. You're going to have everything she submitted to us. And then you can, and you see that, you know, which bill it's related to. So if you're interested in a bill that's not in committee, um, I have no idea what this one under this, but I'm just giving it a try. This will tell you all, all manner of good things. Counterintuitive is if you want to see the work on a bill, look at unofficial. Official is going to show you all the mark throughs, all the X's, all the attorney highlights. But if you just want to see the current status, look for the unofficial tab. So this will tell you all the stages of passage. It gives you the, the act number and the summary. Now, if we're in the middle of the year, it's not going to have all this, but it will tell you um, what's going on in committee, which committees. It will tell you who the attorney is. If you're interested in the bill and you don't remember who drafted it or you want to meet the person who drafted it. If there are fiscal notes, if the JFO has been asked, lots of them here, you can see the fiscal notes. These are, these are all for bills that are not in committee. If they're in committee, you can get the same amount of information, but you can access it from the committee information page. I'm going through this very quickly with the idea that I'm just trying to show you the breadth of what's available. Uh, one thing I tend to do first thing in the morning is uh, I go to the house calendar and uh, it will tell me 
again, we're we're in the last year, but let's say I pick one from oh, Wednesday, Wednesdays are typically good days. This tells me what's going on for the day. If I know we have a long day planned and I see there are three amendments and three bills up for second reading, and I, I may confer with the chair and I say, I'm looking at the floor time. Are we going to be able to do what we want to do? And that's where texts from me start originating, where if the floor gods have determined that the committee gods are going to take it on the chair, then we start looking at that already first thing in the morning. So I look for that. I also look, um, I can't show you because it's a day by day thing, but I also look for bills that are being introduced. Uh, it's more of a guessing game. You know, and, so. and it may just interrupt for if, if you see on the agenda where it, if we start with on what where we're on the floor and then it says after the floor, just as a rule, unless I stand up on the floor and say general and housing will be meeting for at a certain time, 10 minutes after, just assume it's 15 minutes after the floor as a rule. I think that's kind of what happened earlier today. But just if I, I but I still will have a right to stand up and say for me 10 minutes after the floor. And that's usually coming after I'm trying to grab an extra five minutes or something like that. So just um, but as a rule, 15 minutes after the floor. Uh, so one on one, I can help you find the things you're looking for. And um, what I'm necessarily what I'm trying to show you the green books, the green books, it's all online. So if you wanted to look up uh, a statue, they're all here. You just type in a keyword and it's all there. If you wanted to find the membership of other committees, uh, you wanted to reach out to the chair, you wanted to reach out to the committee assistant, they're all right here. Uh, if you wanted to contact the sergeant at arms or the chief or uh, one of the attorneys, and you're not sure of their email address, let's see, legislative council. It's all right. <laughs> I, I can also be the intermediary if you're trying to send messages to folks. But um, I work for labor. There's a ton of information that's readily available, and the starting point is the information. Ron, yes, how often are the laws online updated? the information from last session it's been done beyond that yeah i know i've seen uh two emails over the uh, winter saying that statutes have been updated so i don't know whether it's once a year or twice a year but it's by, by the time the session begins it's been done yeah it's um so what is what appears online is the equivalent of the green book plus a white book if, if, it's, if it goes together Correct. um the white books generally tend to be the updates until the green books are updated, which happens every few years. The green books are annotated, so they give you a better history of what may have happened to a bill throughout time. Um, online, it's not as, it doesn't have the annotations or the footnotes. That's a book tab. Um, if you're interested in, in you know, sometimes paying attention to the history of a bill or a piece of statues is important. But again, that, that's readily available right here behind you or on, online. Uh, questions so far? I uh, compiled the committee contact list and I uh, sent them to you digitally. I have copies for everyone if you would like such. So I can either pass them out or you can just tell me offline. Uh, that is a very rushed version of my uh, presentation. I'm here to take service. If you have questions about the how and the what, if I can't answer it, I will get an answer for you. Um, I'm just curious, like, obviously, you don't help the constituents up, of course, but if a constituent 
ask the question <clears throat> I'm new and may not know the complete ins and outs of housing. Um, if I need help figuring out an agency or something like that, like yes, or an so advocate to connect with, to something like that. I can help you do that. Okay. Um, I cannot characterize legislation. I cannot characterize the process of legislation. I'm limited pretty much to say it's on the agenda. Or I can't I can't speak to what what the process is like, what's going on. I, um, but if you're if you have a constituent who's trying to make a contact with someone in the administration uh, or a private agency, right. uh, that's that's the same thing as if you're coming to me with that question. Mm. What you do with that information is up for you. I cannot write a letter for you, but I can format that letter. In other words, if you send me text, I can drop it into letterhead. I'm not going to proofread it or, you know, but I can drop it into letterhead and make it fit, and put a date on it. I can do that, but I can't write it. Does that make sense? That's it does. And I'm sure other more seasoned committee members could also help me if I had a question. Yeah. Your letterhead is available. Um, we'll hear from Mike Ferrant tomorrow where you can get letterhead um, electronically so that you can just download it on your computer and you can avoid that or when you're printing, whether it's through here or downstairs, you tell people you want it on letterhead as long as you format it yourself and, and um, it can get printed. I know that I, I don't know what side is up on my printer at home. So, um, you know, it's, but it's but it's available electronically. I can drop it into a Word document and have it ready to go. Um, Who to ask where to go to get an answer, where to go to get something is very much something you would come to me for. Um, I have we have this printer, we have a color printer down the hall. But if you send me a document, I can print it for you. If it's a large format, I can send it downstairs to the copy room, and uh, they can take care of it, and I can get it back for you. Um, we had a former committee member who used to refer to the committee room as homeroom. And so this is a great place to start your day and end your day and to come here when you're in need of respite. A word about Fridays. I do not wish to interfere with your deliberative process and your file keeping process. But at the end of the week, I will come through, and if I see cans and bottles and things like that, they're going to go out the door. If there's a can or a bottle you're really attached to, it should go in here. Anything that's in your cubby, I won't take. Anything that's sort of stacked in front of your, your seat, I won't touch, other than to pick it up, because I do wipe all the surfaces down at the end of the week. And so I... I my feeling is that for this to be a really useful and productive environment, it needs to be in clean and inviting. And so um, if there's anything that you don't want tossed and put it in, or, but it's just, you're going to get a lot of invitations to receptions and parties and dinners. And if I see those postcards around and it's days ago, and it's just sitting there. I don't even know who it's addressed to. So, does that make sense? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to make an over point about it. And I've never had anyone. I've never had anyone complain about something that vanished. But I just wanted to let you know that does happen at the end of the week. From the homeroom perspective, um, this is your room as well. So make sure if, um, if you haven't picked out a drawer, which is really what your office is, um, put a post-it on it and or a little card with your name on it and just so that you know or everybody else knows what we, we seem to have a, an abundance of file drawers um, some of which have plates and plastic plastic stuff um food there are some committees that have had that are that have a tradition of having food in them sometimes it's like I've rated the judiciary 
room on numerous occasions because they get those bags of nuts or trail mix from Costco. And so it's really easy when nobody's around to go grab one. But um, we rarely, this committee has rarely reciprocated. And um, this is, what's that? This is the sense of humanity to our work. Um, so the if people want to bring in baked goods, if people want to, um, Ron is not in charge of providing food for us. He's not in charge of uh, providing a basket for our food, but he's obviously very interested in the cleanliness of the room. And so if we, if any of us do bring in baked goods or um, bowls of, of processed foods, that's fine. We just, it's up to us to keep it clean. What I will do to that end is if it's packaged, like what they have in judiciary, I had some cashews today, they were very good. Uh, <laughs> I, will, I will leave them out. If it's cookies or cakes, I'll put them away. Just, I'll just stick them in a drawer to try to discourage creatures. Um, there are committees in the past that have established a budget. And if there were there was one year where a representative had to have me buy, you know, mixed nuts from the grocery store. I mean, if, if there's something like that, we had there was a committee in um, health, House Healthcare years ago had a flower budget, and the committee assistant would buy a bouquet of flowers, you know, every, once a week. So, I mean, if it's something like that, and it's within my normal, I'm going to the store once or twice a week anyway, then I'm I'm happy to facilitate that. Uh, we've never gone down that path. I say so that's, I mean, but that's if there's anybody who wants to be the the person who's in charge, you know, again, to ask for donations, do not, do not, we don't get paid enough for anybody to buy, even at Costco, enough snacks for not only us, but for people like me who go room to room. <laughs> yeah. um, it could be fruit. But again, fruit, you have to take care of your compost and, you know, we separate our compost in this building. Um, so it's it's welcomed, um, but I'm personally not going to be in charge of collecting any kind of um, amount. I'll be glad to donate whatever, you know, we need to, if that's what the committee decides. But that's, um, it's really up to us as a, as a whole. Um, it would be nice if you do bring in baked goods or things that, get on your fingers to make sure we have napkins um because kleenex these kleenex are like sandpaper anyway mm -hmm. so um the supply drawers has quite a few napkins and i'm trying to track down that dispenser i haven't forgotten those yeah just um if you would like to have lunch in here i mean again a year ago when when we were back with COVID restrictions, most people ate in their committee rooms. There are very few chairs available in the cafeteria. Same things apply. Um, we'll find Ron will let us know where the cleaning material is for the room, so that if I spill salad dressing on my desk, I will clean it up. Um, that's it's allowed. It's it just becomes a question of. Um, you know, do we do we all as a team keep it clean? Um, one thing about homeroom, the only time you're welcome in here all the time. If I'm sitting in here having a conversation with Ron or whatever, I mean, it's it's, it's open with one exception. I would ask, which is uh, Wednesday mornings at eight. We have scheduling for the next week, which is usually between forty-five minutes and an hour. We start. On Wednesdays and Thursdays, we're going to start on at 9:15, and we're going to try. I I'm, I try to get done with scheduling by 8:45, so there's still plenty of time for people to come in and settle. But if you know, if we're in the middle of that meeting, I just ask that you know that's that's the one time that we're just trying to concentrate on what our schedule is for the next week. You're welcome to come in and drop your bag, um, but I just ask to refrain from conversations unless. We ask you a question on the particular topic, and that's that's about, that's the only time um, I would ask that 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 
that this room, you know, just that we have that we have that privacy for that a small amount of time. The that said, if you have meetings with people or if you want to do meetings with people, there's two rooms that are next door to us on either side of the hallway are available first come first serve. Um, I had a meeting in here this morning. It was amazing to me to be sitting at those desks and think that 11 people used to sit around in that room. I mean, it's good six feet narrower than this room is. Um, so that's, that's, that's just something that's available that those happen upstairs and down um, on this floor and on the upper floor. Uh, all set? Almost. So, um, touched on supplies and what have you. So, where the refrigerator is, which is kindly loaned to us by our chair, uh, there are three file drawers that are sort of separate from everything else. Most of the supplies are there. Um, party supplies, paper plates, napkins, all that kind of stuff are there. Cleaning supplies are in one of those drawers. Um, file folders and what have you. In the other drawers, uh, in many of the drawers, I left some file folders just because some of you may choose to use your file drawers for files. Some of you may choose not to. So if you open a drawer and there's some file folders there, it doesn't mean you have to live with them. That also doesn't mean that someone else has already taken So I'm happy to remove them or get them out of your way. Um, also, um, I keep a small, very small uh, uh, pharmacy and my supply drawer here. You got a splitting headache. Um, you got a sore throat. Committee assistant came in today and needed a band aid. I mean, I've got a few odds and ends like that. Usually it's grown out of someone asking. So um, I now have toothpaste because someone wanted something that I didn't have. I now have a little sewing kit because someone broke a button and I now have so, You know, it. It's not a lot, but I have a few things that if, if you're welcome to check in, I have both at the desk and then at the thing on your purposes. Um, and then one last word about the refrigerator. So similar with the Friday theme, if you can make a, a note to open the door on your way out the door and remove anything that's been here all week, that would be great. Uh, and the last thing for me, just we met, we had an experience with a page coming in to deliver a note. Um, it's amazing how much texting has changed some of the mm -hmm. communicate or some of the interactions that we have with pages. Probably it's cut it by at least a third, but they will. Anybody, just as the attorneys came in, no one knocks. All right, but this is still even though the door is closed, it's open door. So any constituent, any witness, anybody can walk in, and this goes hand in hand with what we heard from the chief about about being. You know, we're not, we shouldn't fear anybody just pounding in the door, but it, it you we just have to pay attention, especially now that we're in this very public passageway. Um, when we were upstairs, of course, if there were constituents up there who didn't know where they were going, they were lost. They weren't necessarily going to a particular room here. It's just the passageway. Um, pages, again, are not, they're here to deliver messages. Um, for the most part, they have uh, assignments throughout the building uh, in between the Senate and, and the House. They may be situated in the well of the House during slow times. They may be delivering as they've done. Please treat them with respect. They are um, a really nice asset to have, and it's really nice to have 13-year-olds in the building. Um, but they are part of our, our larger holistic self and um, speaking from a, as a parent of someone who was a page it's a real privilege for these for these young people to come younger than me um, to come into the building and it's a it's a memory that they keep for a very long time including the negative ones um, when they do happen and so just and and like um, we're just having a great time watching the difference between a 13 year old young woman and a 13 year old young man. And by the end of this year, the, the boys will have grown eight inches and you know, it'll be a, they won't be shaving yet probably, but um, it's, a, it's a real 
it's really one of the nicest things I see happen in this building in terms of including people. But do do acknowledge them. They don't speak to you. Um, if you do have an envelope, a pink envelope, um, to give them, you can either. I don't. I'm not sure if we still leave it on the table out there or if you find one. I, did, I always hand it to somebody. I don't. Yeah, so they'll take it and they'll bring it down to page central and, and end up sending it back out. But um, anyway, it's just people who are in the building who are important to us and we shouldn't just just like the, the doorkeepers, just like the security staff. Um, please treat them all with respect. Um, they're all here to support us and we attract more lives with honey than um, the food. Their reputation of not treating our, our staff well. So, a word about a word about uh, staying home when not well. Uh, I'm happy to share. Create a meeting, a Zoom meeting link for every meeting. Uh, I need the chairs the way the current rules are. I need the chair's permission to give that to you if you're staying home. So just communicate with the chair if you're not well and you need to stay home. Chair and Ron. Yes. And do not share the Zoom, the room Zoom link with anyone from outside because he's Ron sharing them with witnesses who choose. But with the Zoom bombing that happened when before we realized that Zoom bombing could be a thing, um, if we have a public meeting, um, it'll probably be a Zoom webinar, which doesn't allow for interaction with people people can watch without very limited interaction and so um the rules about voting i mean we don't have anything we won't be having any votes in here soon but in other committees they will be and then on the floor we will be within the next week to 10 days i'm not sure exactly what the rules are yet the, the rules committee is meeting today maybe or sometime this week but we're, we'll have we will have some form of hybrid rules about how to vote. If, if you have to stay home because of COVID, will you have a right to vote in committee or on the floor? Those things are still up in the air because they were all changing at the end of last year as we became less um, focused on COVID. So that's to be determined. But that we're trying to balance off people taking a day and working from home and being able to vote from home for no, for, we don't want it's the legislature. We always think about how do people abuse things. If your child is sick, if you have to stay home, not just because of your child, if you're sick, we're still we have to work those things out and find out what's fair to people. Um, in the pre COVID, pre these screens didn't exist before 2020. Zoom didn't exist before 2020 in this building. Um, you would have tele, you could teleconference in, but you couldn't vote. I, I don't know how that's going to play. So just when they talk about, we'll have once we know, you'll know too. But once we know what the rules are, we'll make sure that those things are very clear. Um, it's a, the chief. The chief alluded to. What do you do if there's a pandemic and you didn't have any rules? To, I mean, the rules said that you have to have your legislative sessions in the state house. Yeah, you, know, you you kind of. <laughs> it's not that you make them up as you go along, but you have to. We had to deal with that, and then, and so we're, this is just a further evolution of, of how we're going to do business as well. Um, not just in pandemic, but how people are living. I mean, one of the things that we learned is that you know, we're not the only ones in the world. So, you know, schools closed down. What are you going to do? So, anyway, that's to be developed. Speaking of staff, we've kept them over here seven minutes. Sorry, gentlemen. Um, what's that? Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll finish soon. Um, I don't know where you guys, uh, where you would like to sit, but. Um, if you want to just start there, basically what I've told him is that you are not our attorneys, but you are your port. We, you are our attorneys in the sense that your portfolio, your your portfolio is covered in this committee. 
And I don't know who wants to take the lead and introduce yourself, um, except for Patrick, of course. I, I am extra not your attorney. Nor, nor like the royal family, are you the spare? Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I'm Pat Titterton. I work at the Joint Fiscal Office. Um, I'm going to be sort of your committee's primary contact over there. So when you're working on bills, anything that's got anything to do with any kind of taxes or the budget or you know anything that has anybody related to it, I'm going to sort of be your primary point of contact. You know, I think in the past we haven't sort of had sort of like a designated point of contact for this committee. Um, but you know we're finally fully staffed, so we have the resources to sort of take a more proactive approach with your committee. Um, and so, you know, I I, I operate as sort of a, a resource to the chair, but also to everyone in the committee. So if you have some kind of idea that you're percolating, some thought that might not be fully fleshed out, uh, I'm happy to talk through that with you and sort of explore what you're thinking about. Um, you know, I'm not going to go immediately talk to anyone else about it. If I need any information from another department, I'll ask you if that's okay. But um, I'm just sort of happy to be sort of your all-purpose resource when it comes to money. And in the end, not just you, but uh, I mean, well, for instance, we're going to work on paid family leave, and there's a lot of moving parts financially that run with that. Um, I assume you'll be working on that or or you may be working on that with, with Joyce Manchester, but you will you can produce upon request what's called a joint fiscal note. So I'm glad you brought that up. So um, we write fiscal notes. Um, and what we write though is there's sort of a summary of the any sort of fiscal impacts that are included in the bill. Um, we typically will write them when a bill is moving. So if you've got something that's not moving, I'm happy to provide any sort of financial or fiscal information associated with that. Um, but we'll write, it's sort of more of a, I guess we'll call it like a formal document. We'll write that if you've got a bill that you're moving on and it's coming out of your committee. So I'll go and write that. And you know, you'll have that in time before you report on the floor. Um, and that will also be sent to the, you know, next committee of jurisdiction that's going to be taking up that bill along the way. And the fiscal note represents an estimate based on information that you can glean, but it's not to be held as the be all and the end all. Is that well, fiscal notes kind of run the whole gamut. You know, we I've written fiscal notes that range from there is no fiscal impact in this bill to, um, you know, fiscal notes that include budgetary issues. Um, you know, if you're appropriating this much from this fund, um, I give a breakdown on what our estimate is if you're making some kind of tax change or expanding. Uh, one example, I think recently, last year that came through here, was there is uh, an expansion of the downtown and village tax credit. Uh, I sort of walk through, might give a brief summary of what that is for some people who aren't familiar, but also this is what it is, this is how you're changing it, this is sort of the new uh, sort of tax expenditure that you're going to be introducing when uh, you do this. Um, and we also do things like we'll estimate costs if you're working on paid family leave, like for example. Um, you know, given whatever the parameters are of your program, we'll be able to you know, come up with some kind of estimate. And you make a good point, a lot of them are estimates. So um, we don't always have all the hard data and we have to sort of do our best approximation in a lot of cases. The fiscal notes have been used probably for the last decade on a fairly regular basis on anything that has money involved with it uh, because of the arc of the session and because they usually work on bills that are moving. So while we may have a handful of bills that we're taking testimony on that have money related to them in some way in the way that you kind of just described them, once we have something seriously moving, you can be sure that other committees also have things seriously moving. And so just like with the attorneys, there will be crunch time for their work as well. And so that's why we try to stay ahead of it and not show up at the last minute. There's going to be plenty of last minute 
request, but to try to um, stay ahead of it a little bit as much as we can so that the pressure is hopefully lessened a little bit. But if they are usually requests, I'd say almost always requested on bills that have any kind of money whatsoever. It's, a, it's something that didn't used to happen, but has for probably the last decade in a way that's somewhat meaningful, um, depending on <laughs> the politics that's involved with, with it, too. And I work a lot with both Damien and uh, David, and so we kind of help guide each other through the process, I guess. <laughs> Great, thank you. Any questions for Pat? Um, if you go to, going back to the image of the, our legislative homepage, where Ron didn't click on, you, you'll see a tab for the Joint Fiscal Office, which will have a lot of documents on it as in every year, there's just a lot of information on it. Um, and that will take you to almost anything financially oriented. Who do you, it's a joint fiscal office, joint with who? So we, that's a great question. Um, we technically work for the joint fiscal committee. Um, so. General assembly. General assembly, yeah. But <laughs> specifically the joint fiscal committee, which is made up of money chairs and leaders should be yeah, money chairs. That's what their homepage looks like. So when they call it the pink lady, it's because the house is pink. Um, and actually, how many new members do you have this year? Okay, so a lot. Um, <laughs> if you'd like, I could send Ron both fiscal votes for the two housing bills I worked uh, on with you guys last year. I mean, it'll show you both an example of what a fiscal note is and also something that this committee has worked on very recently. Sure, that would be helpful. Thank you. All right, Damien. Great. I'm going to turn you guys to the table. So I can get something. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. Howdy. Hi, Nice to see everybody. I've almost started recognizing everyone's faces by now. So this well, is let's good. Put, let's take a ride around the committee. <laughs> Damien gets to probably by April, probably goes to sleep by thinking of the names because he always hears us going. Account representatives. Um, no, I'm kidding. So I'm, kidding. I'm Representative Tom Stevens. I live in uh, Representative Washington Chittenden, which is Waterbury, Huntington, Bolton, and Fuel Score. Kat James is from uh, Manchester, and she's the whip, so she's not here right now, but she'll um, she'll be there. Saudi Lamont, I represent Lamoille, Washington, which is Elmore, Morrisville, Worcester, Woodbury, and Northern Park Stone. Great. Joe Parsons, I represent the wonderful towns of Newbury, Thompson, and Ron. Emily Krasnow, Chitna Nine, I represent uh, Far South Burlington. Ashley Bartley, Fairfax, and most of Georgia. Dennis Lavani, Caledonia Three, Linden, um, Sutton, Sheffield, Wheelock, and Newark. I'm Elizabeth Burroughs, I represent Windsor One, which is Heartland, West Windsor, and Windsor. Okay. I'm Larry Labor, Essex, Orleans One. You don't need the other club. <laughs> <laughs> except, except for this stadium. Except for this stadium. He represents two gores. <laughs> two three. gores. Three. Three? Actually, three. three he represents gores. three gores. Nice. Uh, does the Clyde River run through your district? Yes, it does. Oh, I love the Clyde River. So, like water rafter or fishing? Uh, neither. Uh, I fished when I was younger. I just love going up there. To, uh, it's beautiful, beautiful, quiet area. So. And I'm Mary Howard. I represent Rutland District 6. Robin Chestnut Tangerman, uh, Rutland Bennington District, which is Timnath, Middletown Springs, Pollock, Rupert, and half of Wells. Great. Well, I'm Damian Leonard. Uh, I am your employment and labor attorney. 
Um, so I will be joining you on wage and hour issues, uh, employment uh, related bills. So that could be anything from uh, the paid family leave that has been getting so much talk in the press lately to uh, rules about discrimination at work, um, what employers can and can't ask during a job interview, uh, all sorts of things like that, employment policies. Um, I will also join you on uh, building codes, um, fire and life safety codes, things like that that you might deal with. Um, and then of course, union issues. Uh, come before this committee a lot. Uh, and then the other thing you'll see me on tomorrow is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I work on Native American affairs uh, as well. So that's something that also comes into this committee and then related issues related to discrimination and indigenous peoples like the Truth and Reconciliation Commission falls into my portfolio. Um, for those of you who have interests outside of this committee, and I can't imagine that any of you, <laughs> just kidding. We got um, the alcohol committee and the military affairs committee, so we're, yeah, we're kind of in a box now. I know. Yeah. Um, less, when I started here, uh, General covered this really wide array of um, diverse and not logically connected issues. Um, and I, I was lucky enough to work on most of them at one time or another. Uh, I also work on military affairs and the National Guard um, so and Veterans Affairs. Uh, so if you have questions about that, you want to introduce Bill on that, uh, I can work with you on that. Um, I live here in Montpelier. Uh, I do not live in the State House. Um, part of the reason I live here in Montpelier is so I can get home for dinner with my family. Uh, and spend time with my two little girls. Um, uh, let's see, I enjoy the outdoors. So uh, Clyde River, uh, Elmore Mountain, Groton State Forest. Um, those are three of my favorite places in Vermont, not to slate anyone else's district. <laughs> <laughs> those just happen to be three of my favorites. The Morrisville Rail Trail is awesome. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, um, I'm originally from Massachusetts, but I've been in Vermont for 12 years uh, and I'm loving getting to know the state bit by bit. Every year I travel someplace new that I haven't seen before and I'm just blown away by what a wonderful state we, uh, we live in. So, uh, do you have questions for me? So generally speaking, um, <coughs> If I have a bill request, when I have a bill request, um, I've always gone through you and you made the request and put, or put the request in and then it goes through the system. Like you're not determining who gets who gets the bill I requested, but you facilitate that. Is that still? I'm happy to do that for everyone uh, on the committee or honestly anyone, uh, any member, I'm happy to do that. Um, the best way to reach me is by email or stopping by my office during a time when committees aren't meeting. Um, especially when things get busy, I start to be in my office less and less. Um, but for, uh, for everyone's guidance, I sit directly below the clerk's office. So if you go down that spiral staircase right outside the clerk's office, my door is the second on the right. Uh, just feel free to stop by. You don't need to make an appointment. Um, if you want to guarantee I'm there, making an appointment is good, but there's no requirement. Uh, I'm happy to come meet with you too um, in the legislative lounge, in the committee room, in the cafeteria, uh, to if you have an idea you want to discuss, um, particularly if it's in my area. I'm not so much help if you want to ask me about health insurance or something like that. I just don't know enough and I'll just take notes and put in a request for you and put you in touch with the attorney. Um, but yes, I'm happy to do that. Uh, if you have a question about who you should ask, who you should get in touch with because you have a question about a bill or you want to request an amendment, I can also connect you with them. Anyone from our office can do that for you. So um, 
yeah, and we'll we'll just pass you on to the correct attorney. Um, let me think. Office out. I mean, when do you get here? Do you still drop your kids off? I, yeah, I drop my daughter off at school on the way into the office. So I'm here between 8.15 and 8.30, depending on how quickly she moves that morning. Um, she's a seven-year-old, so it's hit or miss. The shoes. <laughs> it's um, the shoes. Um, what's that? I was just saying Wednesday, we're still at 8.15 instead of 8. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys can start at eight. I'll join you as soon as we get here. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I tend to have uh, some planning meetings first thing in the morning, um, but I'm usually here by 8.15. I try to leave the building by 4.30 during the session, um, Monday through Thursday. I work late into the night uh, just from home. So if you want to reach me by email, I'll be checking emails till at least nine o'clock most nights. Yeah. Friday nights, uh, I stop working and I take some space from, from work. Uh, I do work on the weekends, but I may not answer your email. Um, so it all depends on where I'm working and what I'm working on. Uh, a lot of times that quiet time when I can actually work on your bill requests without an interruption is, is really valuable. So I'll leave my email off. Um, just getting that headspace to actually think through a problem without being interrupted every five minutes is, is good for me. Um, this is probably a lot of personal stuff that you guys just didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's not. It's, um, it's not because I think you know the conversation really boils down to your human. Your human. And you're allowed to have a life. And um, I mean, I know at the chair's level, I've, we've been having this a reiteration of, okay, great. I know you're working till nine o'clock now, but I'm, I know I'm not going to call you at nine o'clock unless, unless we've set something up between us. And I and I just want to. That's that's something to remember again is respecting their work. Um, Yes, there's going to be a time when we're going to be working on a bill over time together, but I do think that it's important for us to say, you know, again, if you have a chance to ask him for a 50 page bill or a short form in this day and age and the way that things are a short form and we can explain short forms at a different time, but it takes a long time to put a 50 bill, 50 page bill together. And unless it's really a priority, it's really going to move. It just, just, it just takes time. And um, it's, I, I don't like to hear that you're working till nine, but I also understand that, you know, from June 1st on, it's a little bit easier. So, yeah, I mean, to give you guys perspective, and, I'm, and it's like this across our office, we're all backlogged by, you know, at my backlog, I think right now is 28 bills that have been assigned. That's not the ones that are in the system that haven't been assigned to me. And so that's 28 bills I haven't even touched yet. Um, so you can imagine we have three more weeks till your request deadline hits. Request deadline. Yeah. And then another month after that. So sometime, if this is a normal year, uh, in addition to the bills I'm working on now and have circulating with members, I'll be writing another 50 bills between now and the end of February. Um, and then your Senate colleagues don't even have a request and introduction deadline this year. So they'll keep keeping going <laughs> through the end of the session. So that, I mean, is the reality of it. That's our job. That's why we work late hours. Um, I work till a certain point because it keeps me from doing what I did when I first started, which is doing crazy hours when the deadline would approach and it's not healthy for anyone. So, um, you know, I just kind of meter it out over time because I find I do better work. Everybody works differently, but um, please keep in mind, uh, some of my colleagues are different. I don't give out my cell phone number and I don't use it at work. Uh, it's, it's on my desk. So, um, you know, I don't do text messages. If you want to reach me, email, or you can call my office number. Um, I'll get the office message when I get to my office next. Um, 
the email is really the best way to reach me because I travel with my laptop um, and I'm constantly monitoring emails. So if you need something quickly, that's the best way to get to me. And if I don't get back to you right away, um, you know, I've, I've probably got something else going on um, and I'll get back to you uh, at a reasonable time. If you really, really need me and it's an emergency, um, you can always ask people to try to track me down. You know, for example, if there's a, yeah, Ron, for example, can track me down. Um, for example, if you need an amendment for the floor, that's the kind of emergency we're talking. Not, I've got a bill I don't want to discuss. <laughs> so, Rob, um, Damien, can you talk a little bit about short form versus long form and how judicious use of that can make it a lot easier for everyone? Yes, yeah, so short form is uh, great if for a couple of different reasons. One, you haven't figured out all the details of the bill, but you know what the big idea is. Um, Another instance when short form is great is if it's a bill that you want to put in, you haven't thought it through necessarily a lot, or maybe you've got a constituent who's really asked you to put it in, uh, but you haven't had time to devote a lot of work to it, but you do want to make sure it gets introduced so people start talking about it in the building. Um, and the third option is if you've got sort of a, a bill that you don't think it's ready for prime time yet necessarily. You're not sure if it's going to get traction in committee, um, but there are ideas that you think might be able to, some of the ideas might get picked up for another bill that's moving, uh, or it's something where a discussion could start in year one of the biennium, and then in year two, you get a flushed out bill. Um, the trick with a short form is it's basically uh, a very detailed statement of purpose. It outlines the intent of the bill and the high points. What it doesn't include is the 40 pages of legislative text that iron out every uh, detail and identify every little nuanced issue that we're going to identify in committee. To get a short form bill to move, the committee first has to vote to take it up and amend it. And then the committee actually does the amendment. So sometimes short forms are also great if it's something that needs more testimony. Um, they also don't have the same deadlines. So if it's an issue that comes to you late, a short form is also great for that. Um, so a number of members have started using short forms more with me uh, when they have a whole bunch of items they want to get out there. They know it will take a huge amount of time to draft all of those bills with 10 separate requests or four separate requests. Um, and so now, but they think maybe one or two of the ideas could get traction in a larger bill that's moving. Uh, and so what they've been doing is coming to me with a short form and saying, can I put these four bills from previous biennials into a short form or these four bills from other states into a short form. I think they're all good ideas. I haven't had time to fully hammer them out. We're not going to have time to do them justice in a long form right now. Why don't we do a short form and then if they start moving and even actually before they start moving, we can start working on, you know, little bits and pieces to start ironing out those details. Another thing I've done in the past too is year one short form, year two long form, if the short form is starting to get more interest and so forth. Um, and then we have time over the summer to actually work on that when the deadlines are not so close and you have time to talk to advocates and constituents and so forth. So they're, the mechanics though, it's the same request as a long form, just tell us up front that you want it to be a short form. Um, and then what you get is really the statement of purpose, but I tend to make it longer and more detailed than I normally would. So if I've laid out all the legislative language, I try to condense that statement of purpose down. Uh, if I haven't done that, I let the statement of purpose run longer. Uh, and oftentimes I'll bullet point it. So it's each idea set out in a separate bullet. So you can kind of see. Um, so 
in in the his, in you know in the past short films had a negative connotation that they were sort of like as requests or only but i think during the pandemic it really became clear that under capacity and over asking of bills you know I, at least in this committee if i see a short form bill i'm not going to discriminate against it because it's a short form bill if it's a good idea or if it's something that's that has legs to it then we can discuss the process of pulling it off the wall but it's not again at least in this committee i don't treat it as a, the poor sister of of the long form versions of a bill yeah and that, this is also an outgrowth too just in the last in the eight years that i've been here the number of drafting requests has uh increased dramatically um and i don't know what that's a function of, but um, it's literally gone up by hundreds um, and our staff levels have stayed the same. So in order to keep up with that, especially for bills where before it would have been a lot of back and forth and back and forth to try to get legislative language out. Uh, if you don't know the details, um, a great way is to say, I'd like to do a short form because I want to start the conversation and then we can figure out the details later. Um, so, um, one more question for David. I, know, David on, on, on board. I just have a process question. Um, so you can't tell us whether there's been a drafting, 10 drafting requests for the same thing, but if you, yeah. if you do, if somebody puts forth a short form bill, and there's also a, and it fits with a long form bill. Once both of those received numbers, can we, can you, if you worked on both of those, can you tell us that they would fit? So er everything that comes in is by default confidential. Right. Um, you can request two, two things. Um, you can tell us one, if there are people you're working with or talking with that you want us to also be in touch with. Um, that often works best when you're working with advocates. The other thing that you can say is we have we have two sort of check boxes. One, I'm interested in co-sponsoring. So if other people are interested in this issue and come to you asking about it, you can tell them I've already put in a bill. And the other is put me in touch with anyone else who's working on this issue. Um, and a lot of times the dance I'll do if I get two bills like that, one a long form, one a short form, is I will contact both of them and say, hypothetically, if someone else is working on this issue, would you be interested in talking to them? No, no that's not what I mean. What I mean is if I had a short form bill that could be an amendment to five different bills, once those five different bills are out can you tell me hey i don't know if you saw this but i don't do that um in part there there's a variety of reasons um but really because the question of whether it goes on to a bill is a is a political and process question for you all um so if and it's also a question for that committee of jurisdiction Okay. So when your bill gets referred to a committee, um, at that point, you know, it, it becomes up to you to start talking to the chair and the committee members to say, hey, if you can find a vehicle for this, it'd be great to put this on there. Or alternatively, if you see something coming to the floor that's germane, so related to the same subject area. Um, so. I'll just give you an example from, from my world. There's a bill, let's say a bill moves out of this committee to raise the minimum wage. If you were a member of another committee and you had a bill in there to uh, alter the tipped wage formula for our state, you could propose that as an amendment on the floor. I can't tell you if it's gonna be germane. That's gonna be a call for the clerk and the house as a whole, the house decides that. But you could certainly say, hey, I've got two. That's a wage bill. Mine's a wage bill. I'm going to propose an amendment and we'll see if it flies on the floor. Um, so you could do that or you could go to the chair of the committee 
and say, hey, would you be willing to put this on that bill or at least consider it? Um, but again, that becomes a political question for the chair uh, and for the committee members there. Uh, the chair may know ahead of time that I've got the votes for minimum wage. I don't have the votes for minimum and tipped wage in the same year. Um, and then the chair may say to you, you know, you're welcome to do a floor amendment, but I can't get it through my committee right now because that's that's too much to ask. And this is all a hypothetical, but it's that's the sort of thing you'll run into there. And that that becomes a political issue. Um, you're welcome to come to my office and ask me questions about those bills. And I can kind of walk you through what's in them and talk to you a little bit about whether it relates to your issue or not. But I can't seek you out to say, hey, try to try to marry it up to these bills. And in part, by the end of the session, I've got 100 bills and I can't remember yeah, right. what they are and where they yeah, are. Right. What? Um, <laughs> and and in, in part, just because we're, we're not allowed to play politics and the, uh -huh. the perception if I was really working closely with one member but not another could be that I'm being partisan yep. or something like that and so we, we just try to avoid that's fair doing that and Thank that's you. Um, a good segue I mean I want David yeah. to come in but uh, while you're switching just the, the reminder that they we are their clients and even though you know we're all Danny, maybe David will be working with us when it comes to things like amendments on the floor. You know, if if Robin wants to, I mean, he wouldn't do it now on, as a member of the committee, but well, let's just say someone else said, wants to introduce it just the way that that was explained. Damien's not going to tell us that there's an amendment. Uh, you know, he can't say, oh, he can't come up to me and say, oh, by the way, they're trying to kill your bill. With this amendment, if that's just like that goes against the grain of of the nonpartisan work that he's doing, and it's kind of frustrating. It's not frustrating. I mean, it's just weird to look at, to be on the floor and see him having crafted the bill that you're so fond of, <laughs> and the amendment that would trash it. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That I mean, that's that's just the way the job is. Um, and it, it does get really weird when you have contentious bills on the floor, especially too, because you'll oftentimes I'll draft six amendments and only three of them see the light of day. Uh, and the, the flip side of that for us is we have no idea what the political maneuvering is that's going on in the background or why three of those amendments just didn't get offered. You know, I'll often be sitting there on the floor waiting for someone to drop their amendment, and then they never stand up, and I'll, <laughs> I'll never know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's that's the way uh, it goes in this building. So, so we will um, see you tomorrow morning. Yes, looking forward to it. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want me to stick around, or all right? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, David. Unless you want to hang out here, my spiel. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hi, I'm going to stand up if you don't mind because I've been sitting at my desk pretty much all day and my knees hurt. Um, and I'm, I'm old and broken from playing legislative basketball, which I need to talk to you all about at some point. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I'm uh, David Hall. I'm one of your other attorneys. I am your individual attorney. I'm also a collective attorney for the subject matter of housing, which is what brings me here, among other things. I like to say that I usually work on things that make people really happy because I'm giving money away all the time, whether it's economic development or it's workforce development. Um, but I also do work on housing, and that's a, obviously it's a big word, right? I mean, your jurisdiction is huge. I don't do all the things on housing. Housing has so many components to it. So for instance, zoning in Act 250, that's a natural resources issue. I don't work on that. Um, I do work on landlord tenant issues. I work on programs like VHF pro VHFA programs that help promote housing, development of affordable housing, those types of things. I work on mobile homes and mobile home parks. I work on consumer protection, which sometimes comes up in the context of housing. Um, the other sort of half of my career is commerce and economic development. 
not things that you generally deal with, but things like business organizations, consumer protection, workforce, tourism, marketing, uh, regulated in certain entities, uh, sometimes being the so time. The, yep. What's the difference between workforce <laughs> and employment law? Yeah, big difference. <laughs> uh, just, you know, just like in housing, there are slices of where it falls on the spectrum. Workforce development, the side that I work on really is how do we get more workers? How do we train more workers? Um, what are our CTA, CTE centers doing? How do they relate to the education system for secondary, post-secondary students? What is Department of Labor and Com the Agency of Commerce doing to try to support the, the, the development of the workforce? Versus Damien stuff, which is the hardcore regulation of things like unemployment insurance, paid leave, benefits, um, minimum wage, those types of aspect of the employer-employee relationship. So again, I, I get to pump money through the Vermont training program. He gets in the middle of the fight between, you know, labor and employer. You know, that's no fun. My stuff's the fun stuff. Um, so one thing I think you probably will want to know about the way that I work with this committee historically, <clears throat> I have this a lot in my other committees too, is that while I will have some bills that are discrete, let's say it's a landlord tenant bill that wants to you know, discuss, I don't know, security deposits. That's a very discrete issue. It'll be one shortish bill. We'll just deal with that, be done. We also though tend to do in this building omnibus bills, which you know, become these massive, I'm not gonna use the word Christmas tree bills because that's a loaded term, but uh, omnibus in the sense that it pulls in, it has its own gravitational force and eventually just pulls all these different pieces into it. So it's not only housing, but then it's got like, 18 different pieces that all could be their own bill, right? So when that happens, I will shepherd that bill through the process, both sides. It will usually involve like half of my office. I mean, I think this year we have six people, six attorneys so far working on the first iterations of a housing bill. Um, so knowing who the right person is on any question you might have can be challenging. You're welcome to ask me. Chair Ron, who will probably ask me, I'll say, oh, well, that's that that sliver of housing or whatever is so and so's sliver. Uh, the other piece, so like there are a lot of attorneys working on that. There could be multiples of you working on different aspects of it, or maybe there's a part you're more interested in the other one. Um, generally, the way that bills work is uh, it sort of flows like through the chair to me and back, and um, it, you know, if there's a part he wants you to work on, he might go sit and say, go work outside the room with such and such on this aspect of this bill, bring it back to us. Let's hear what you guys came up with type thing. You always have as individual members, the right to work with me on any component of any legislation you want to work on. And that includes committee bills. So if you don't like what the committee's doing, you could try to work with me to come up with your own slate of language and come and pitch it. I will say is the committee process is committee bill. Usually it's best to try to reach some sort of consensus together, but that is not always how it has to work. Um, so we can do it. We can do it however you think is best. I cannot give you political advice on like, what's the best way to do this, right? That's going to be something you want to talk to your leadership about, the chair, a, a more experienced member or whatever, or just follow your own guts. But um, I wouldn't be any help giving you political advice anyway because i don't i'm not a very political person but, but what about constitutional uh yeah. aspects or at least yep known constitutional sure aspects? that's a great great question thanks for bringing that up so in the process of developing a bill with you as a sponsor or as working on well actually it's not or it's both uh in a process with you if you wanted me to write something that may have constitutional infirmities or raise like let's say preemption issues of federal legislation. My job is to tell you that your job is to decide whether to proceed. It works the same with the committee. So I, I, if, if that comes up in a bill that you're working on in your possession, odds are I've already told the person who sponsored that I don't work with them for them anymore. Once it's referred here, it's your bill now. You're the primary client. My job is the same to you, which is to say for the record, you know, this could be a commerce clause issue, contracts clause, First Amendment free speech thing, whatever. So I will flag that for you and say, here's where I see the 
potential issue. Here's the test that we use for whether or not this is permissible, maybe some factors to think about, blah, blah, blah. Ultimately, it's your decision whether to proceed, not mine. I, I can't even say definitively that something is constitutional or not, because really that's up to a court, right? Not to me. But I can say, based on the case law, et cetera, here's some landmines. You get to navigate. <laughs> Any other questions? Any questions? The... Um... Yours, one of the things with you in particular is that our sister committee in the Senate is economic development, housing and general affairs. And because we got rid of um, military affairs, we don't deal with government operations who covers that over in the Senate. <coughs> but the main thing here that the difficulty with like again, why David is not our committee's attorney is that he's working in economic development. And also all of these attorneys do the same work in the Senate. And so there's this, so David in, in essence is working for at least four committees at any given time. And so, which for me is a time issue can we get David for this? Does it go, you know, does it go up against this other committee in the Senate or economy? Last year, at the end of last year, David had two major housing bills and a major economic development bill going on at the same time. And he's still working here. <laughs> um, so it's just again, if there's a respect for the time, there's a desire to keep a respect for for their humanity and the ability to do the work. But it's it's a split portfolio, um, which again goes from some of the topics that we deal with are. Again, if we're dealing with minimum wage and they're dealing with workforce development, workforce development is saying we need people who work at this wage, and we want, you know, it just there is a there is um, a, a natural tension between those two committees. And um, David, we so we just have to we can't get into because it's not in our portfolio directly, you know. But when we have David, it is for the things that he's listed off the housing. Um, uh, what well, else? It's mostly housing, right? For us, yeah, yeah, pretty much exclusively. Again, it's a big umbrella, so there's lots going on there. Um, but we've also dealt with, um, as as you mentioned, so for instance, zoning work is done by a different attorney. So if we if we end up getting handed a zoning bill, um, we'll work with Ellen Sikowski. Yep. Um, we will see other attorneys from legislative council um i just call them special guest stars um, <laughs> who show up for one bill or another because again being in the general committee we can take bills from other committees or that don't quite fit but would be a health care bill or a human service bill or um so we'll we'll have other attorneys but david and damien are are our primary portfolio of attorneys. Um, so what else do you want to impart upon us? Um, That's about it. Same rules that Damien was talking about, best way to catch you is through email. Yep, um, yep, definitely. Um, you'll see me running around the building and as we get closer to crossover, <laughs> you'll see me running faster into more places. <laughs> I think I've worked in every committee if, this point in the whole process. So I just have, tend to have a very broad portfolio. But that's okay, it keeps it fun and interesting. Um, uh, I do still work here, this is my 15th session. Um, started here with two young kids, uh, and now I have three, one of whom is about to go to college, uh, live in town. And have they graduated high school or they you know, my son's a senior, Gabe, and then I have a sophomore daughter and a son who's in eighth grade. He's playing Cross at Brook tonight in our eighth grade. I coach his basketball team. Um, <laughs> we sorry, my watch is going off. Um, yeah, and um, I you know I, I appreciate your sensitivity to the job and my time. Uh, it is busy, but you know, this is how it works. 
it's a good schedule. It's, you know, pandemic sort of turned things on its head where it felt like I was working always and never. And I'm sure you guys know what that felt like. But if we if we do move back to the paradigm of more normal in-person engagement than this time of the year, January to May, and I sort of live and breathe here. My family knows the rhythm of that job. And then, you know, summer's not so bad and the fall's much lighter. And I do spend it my time going around to all your different parts of the state, enjoying what it has to offer. If my wife is an eighth generation dairy farm girl, but uh, I'm a yeah. transplant from the South of Met in North Carolina. So um, I'm, a, <laughs> I, I'm a Vermonter at heart, but only a resident of 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. It's nice to be here. I, I appreciate, I, I guess I did want to say that I, I appreciate you all doing public service. I know the hours are long and the pay is crappy, uh, but it matters. It's important. And I'm, I'm glad to work with you because I know one thing that one thing that allows me to keep working in this job is that no matter what your background or, or policy perspective or party or whatever, I, I have always felt that the Vermont delegation of representatives and senators are here because they want to make Vermont a better place. And to me, that makes this an easy place to work and to stay. So I'm glad to be here. And thank you all for your work. Thank, thank you so much. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye.